Any excuse that I have to whip out the chainsaw, I'll be taking it. It just so happens we had a pretty bad storm last night, so we got some trees that we need to chop down. One done, on to the next one. This one's gonna be fun. We have a sponsor for today's vlog, and I'm really glad that we do. You know, it's activities like this that I don't do very often seem to make me the most sore. And it's really not a big deal to be sore, except for when, you ha when your day-to-day -day activities involve you throwing kids or picking kids up and putting them in bed and wrestling around with the kids, which, you know, that's what I love to do, dad mode. Today's sponsor is Blue Emu, and they have a new product out. It's Hemp Ultra Pain Relief. Blue Emu has been around since 2002 using real emu oil, and now you have the added benefit of hemp, which by the way is THC free and state and federal compliant. One of the best things that I love about this hemp formula, it's fast acting and it's odor free. So someone like me for my job, I am in a really small space, a tight space with a patient, and so I don't want them to be smelling my pain relief <laughs> lotion that I just put on my back or my neck or my elbow or whatever that's sore. I don't want them smelling it on me. So not only does Blue Emu Hemp Ultra Pain Relief relieve painful muscles, but unlike other pain relief lotions, also moisturizes your skin. And the best part is, there's no burning, there's no stinging, and there's no odor. Blue Emu products are a staple in our medicine cabinet, and they should be in yours too. So follow the link below, order yours today, try out this Hemp Ultra Pain Relief. It's really great stuff, you're gonna love it. It is almost five o'clock on Monday. Um, I called my IVF clinic this morning when they opened, and they basically just said that if, you know, that bleeding could be caused by a bunch of different things and that there's not really much, if anything, that they can do for it anyway. And so just to write it out. And so that was this morning at like 8 a.m. And I was still bleeding at that point. And then a couple hours later, I just was kind of not satisfied with that answer, I guess. And I wanted more of an investigation into why I'm bleeding. And if anything, just like maybe some reassurance that something's still okay. And so I called my local OB's office, which is exactly what my IVF clinic told me not to do, which I think is kind of weird. I don't know. But anyway, I called them and they just got back to me and said that my OB here wants to draw blood and do an ultrasound. And they, by the time they finally got back to me, it was almost five o'clock. And so they said the best way to do that is to go to the ER and um, triage that way. So actually my new OB, who I will be meeting next month, that's my first appointment with her um, when I graduate from the fertility clinic, God willing. So what was I saying? My original first appointment with her is next month. Um, and I guess she's very good. And she's actually the on-call OB right now. So she's the one that said to come in and she'll end up reviewing it that way. I don't know if I'll actually meet her. I bet they'll just do ultrasound draw labs and she'll review it somewhere in the hospital. So that is my update. I have been on bed rest all day. My IVF clinic said bed rest for until 24 hours after you stop bleeding. And I probably stopped bleeding around maybe 1 p.m. I may be spotting a little bit now, but I don't know if that counts as bleeding. So I'll probably ask in here. That was our room when Eloise was born. 
we pulled into the parking lot at 5 a.m. or whatever it was and that was the only light on on the whole floor. I wish I wish I could go up to the labor and delivery floor but they said I'm probably too early to go up there. Welcome back to Siberia. We can make jokes now. Thank God. I mean, I, I, I had no I had no doubt in my mind that everything was going to work out okay. It I mean, usually does. If you would have seen the blood. Oh, I did. You sent you sent me pictures. You did, that was the least of it. That's a lot of blood. If you would have been the one It was a lot With of blood. blood waterfall pouring out of you. Oh, I'm really glad that you went to the doctor, honey. That was 100% the correct. Totally agree. But I still, I just had, I had confidence. I am glad. All right. We're going to show. So, it's what I suspected. It's what I hoped. I don't want to say it's what I suspected. It's what I hoped it would be. It's a subchorionic hematoma. Say that 10 times fast. Exactly. Subchorionic? What's chorionic? Um, there must be something in the uterus called the chorion, mm. and it's just below that. That's weird that we've never heard of the chorion. I mean, do we know the layers of the uterus? Yes. Chorion sounds familiar. I think I'm. I had a human development class in college, which was actually really cool, especially since we went on to do IVF because we learned about the embryo and. The actual process that happens at conception where the sperm meets the egg and how like the entire rest of the egg shuts off immediately to any other sperm because it doesn't want to fertilize twice. Cool stuff. But anyway, <laughs> we'll I cut to the chase. We saw two healthy babies on the ultrasound at the ER. Thank God. If I, if I might tell the tale that led up to that moment, I sat in the ER for four hours in the waiting room. They drew blood from me three different times because my blood kept sitting so long that it hemolyzed. Really? Yes. They what did the all heck? this before I even went back. It was weird. So they drew your blood and just let it sit there? I guess. And then they drew it again and let it sit there. And then they drew it a third time. <laughs> what in the world? I uh, know. Our our local hospital, I don't I really don't want to badmouth them cuz I actually, we, they're they're good for this the size of the area. Would right. you say? Yes, but they have a bad reputation. A high mortality rate, if you will. Yeah, um, but some of the departments are really good. Like the cancer department's really good. The OB department is really good. Delivery, yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. So it's really weird. You go in, and they triage you first. They do an IV. They get your vitals. They put the little pulse oximeter on your finger, which has legit like a four foot long cord attached to it that you wear the whole time you're waiting. Really? Yes. And a blood pressure cuff that comes with you that's on your arm the whole time. Really? Yes. Huh. So I'm like flinging this thing around for four hours in the waiting room because it's taped. It's not just like clamped onto my finger, it's taped onto my finger. And I have a blood pressure cuff on and I have an IV in my arm. Weird. While I'm waiting in the waiting room huh. so then our dear friend Cassie surprised me in the waiting room of the ER and helped take my mind off of things and it was yeah thanks Cassie for being there when I couldn't wonderful um and then she you guys went through your purses and who had flounder she did actually I think I ended up with it but what is that even what, what do you mean flounder how did you have flounder flounder is the fish off of Mer the little mermaid uh, That's his name. Okay. I didn't know what it was. You thought somebody just had a filet of flounder? Yes. I thought that was really weird. <laughs> that would be weird. So then they call me back and I like sat on the little triage bed while the doctor came in immediately and two nurses and they just like stood around the bed and all watched me while he explained that when a woman at my gestational age of pregnancy comes in bleeding like this there's a one in four chance that it'll end in miscarriage did he know that you were that we transferred genetically normal yes. embryos yes 
did you tell them that our reproductive endocrinologist said that it was actually only a 10%? If I'm actively bleeding, I think that... Does that up the chances? I'm sure. I'm sure just like in general, a woman at six weeks pregnant Anyway, and then I immediately started crying. That's like, that's how he came, that's like what he came in he, saying? He wanted me to be guarded. Okay. I think he's probably seen a lot of women that had nothing there. As if you weren't already guarded? I mean, you were in the emergency room bleeding. Right, I don't, I don't know. Oh, yeah. He he just, well then I'm like actively crying and, and he's like, kind of like asking me random questions after that and I'm like not even able to answer him because I'm crying. And he's like... I just want to tell you the potential for bad news along with the potential for good news. Like he kind of justified why he went through that, which I can appreciate. Yep, good. Um, so then he went and got the sonographer? Then he got the sonographer and she came in, started the ultrasound. She, she did one on my tummy. Oh really? Yes. So she didn't use the wand? No. Oh, great. I know. She asked if my bladder was full, and I said, I think it is, kind of. And, yeah, you can see everything perfectly. Awesome. I know. Well, do you want to show it? Yes. It's pretty crazy. I guess, well, why don't we just put it on the screen? Okay, well then, like, why don't you talk about it while okay. we're going to put it on the screen? Okay. So, you could see the two sex almost immediately when she first put the wand on and in addition to the two sacks that the babies are in you can see the hemorrhage which is going around that whole right side right there it's huge it's humongous it's bigger than both of the baby's sacks combined and then it goes around the other side too look how big it is like right there yeah that's huge so that's all blood and there it goes on the other side all the way surrounding the babies completely 360 degrees and so is this normal to have that much bleed? <laughs> I Like don't if you were going to do a random ultrasound on a random woman that's 6 weeks pregnant, would would you see something like that? I don't know what the percentage of incidence a subchorionic hematoma is. And I doubt I bet it's like underreported because not very many women have They probably an, think it's their period, right? Right. Well, not many women have an ultrasound this early. Right. Um and then also, a lot of times it'll reabsorb on its own and you won't have any bleeding. Oh. So there's not a guarantee that having one of these causes bleeding. So you may never even know. And if you don't have your first ultrasound until like 10 weeks, which is I think pretty average if you're on your second or third pregnancy and you didn't do IVF, then yeah, you don't, you don't get one until then and it's probably already resolved by then. So, there's a chance that I'll just like keep bleeding off and on until this thing goes away. That's not scary at all. Yeah, exactly. Um, they want me to follow up with my OB at the IVF clinic tomorrow and let them know that this thing is there. And I think they're going to send their notes. I'm sure she took measurements of the thing and she was wondering if it was showing up at all on the first ultrasound. Which I don't think it did. I don't think it did either. So just with, since Thursday. And I had that picture of the two together and I showed it to her and she said she didn't see anything on it, but it right. could have been like in a different layer. You would have think, because Dr. Wilshire took his time. I know. You would have think we would have seen it. I know. Hmm. And she did ask if there's a chance that there was a third. Because the hemorrhage was so big in places, she thought it might be like a sack, but that would have probably shown up. Yeah, I, yeah, like I said. It was a very detailed ultrasound that Dr. Wilshire did. Right. He checked fallopian tubes and everything. Mm-hmm. Crazy. I know. Are you ready to do your shot? Oh. Yes. They should have just did it. I well, know. I guess, I guess you wouldn't do it IV, would you? No. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. All right. Let's do your shot. Okay. Should we just end the vlog here? Yeah, let's end the vlog. Or should we do your shot on the vlog? Do you guys want to see the shot? Do you guys like seeing the shot every time? You're probably like, okay. We'll skip this one. We've seen enough. We'll skip it. Well, Rachel was in the emergency room tonight. I had, so previously, like where that HelloFresh box is, we would just pile up shoes like in a basket. It looked horrible. It was always overflowing and there were just shoes everywhere. So I was looking on Pinterest 
for like really good storage solution for shoes and there for sale were two racks just like this that were old pallets for a hundred and fifteen dollars so I'm like well I have some pallets so I just cut them up and you know made a little bottom so that they would hold the shoes and boom there you go I think what I would really like to do, if, I wish I had a blowtorch, because I would blowtorch them. That, they, that way they would kind of match better, like the stain on the walls. But Rachel likes the rustic look, so I guess we'll, I guess we'll just leave it like that. But it's like, a, it's a really, you know, it's kind of a cool, cool place to put your shoes. And it holds a lot of kids' shoes, so that's good.